Hello friends, happy April. Uh, welcome to my monthly YouTube live. For those of you who don't know who I am, and because I always forget to do an introduction, my name is Dana Frederick, and I am a fantasy, steampunk, mostly steampunk really, uh, young adult author, um, and Instagram is one of my favorite places to hang out. So welcome, um, if you don't know me, or if I don't know you, it's nice to meet you. So usually I, um, usually I just kind of ramble here in the beginning. So I'm just going to ramble until we start to get people joining us and whatnot. Um, whew, man, you guys, <laughs> I have been on the struggle bus today. Um, I thought I was going to do like a new camera configuration. And then at the very last second, like one minute ago, remember that Instagram live is supposed to be vertical. I thought I was going to try to do it like sideways, like YouTube style. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, um, that was not that was not a good plan. So I had to like switch it super, super fast um, right before we started. But thankfully, like I already have kind of a setup uh, going that's fairly easy to uh, fairly easy to, to switch around. So yes. So hooray, we made it work as always. Um, <laughs> Right. You just, you just fake it till you make it. Right. That's, that's just how we do. So anyway, um, yeah. So happy Instagram live, uh, happy April, like I said. And if you guys have any questions for me throughout the, um, throughout the live, feel free to drop them in the chat. There's also a Q and a, uh, section that you can drop them in anything like that. So I'm not picky. You guys do what you do. Um, whatever makes you happy and we'll get your questions taken care of. So, um, man, you guys, I have a lot of news today, so I think I'm just going to jump right in. Okay, so first of all, travel is planned, which, whew, that's a little bit crazy. So it feels a little bit weird, um, but I am scheduled for my second vaccine coming up this week, which is very exciting. Um, my husband just got his second one, and it he was rough for, for a little while, so I am expecting to just be down for the count one day this week. Um, but yeah, but that'll be really great. So travel is planned. Um, it's very exciting. Of course, it all depends on how things go. I think everyone kind of feels a little bit, um, just a little bit weird right now with maybe traveling again, maybe not with just like not knowing how things are going to go. Um, so yeah, so, oh man. Okay. So where am I going? I've got a list. So I am currently signed up to do the over Labor Day weekend, um, the Big River Steampunk Festival in Hannibal, Missouri. So that's a four day event. That's kind of full on, um, especially for like the first one I'm back at. So that's going to be really interesting. But I've been there before. It's super fun. It's got a really great community. Um, man, like <laughs> we've definitely like kind of come together in some situations. Um, through adversity. I did the first time I did a big river event was they did like a spring event. Um, was that, no, that wasn't last year. That was the year before, but anyway, um, yeah. And then there was flooding and then they had to move it and then they had to move it again. And so like at the 11th hour, they found a place, but it was really nice. Cause like the whole community comes together, um, all of downtown Hannibal to put on this huge event. It's really, really fun. Um, so I'm really excited about that. So like I said, Hannibal, Missouri, big river steampunk, uh, festival. It's outdoors in case that helps anyone feel kind of better about it. Um, but yeah, it's super fun. It's great. Also, let's see, October 2nd, I'm scheduled to be in New Orleans for, um, NOLA Bookstars. The Bookstars, um, events, they kind of go to a lot of different places. Um, so NOLA is going to be their thing. That was obviously was supposed to happen last year and COVID. Um, but yeah, so that's been rescheduled October 2nd in New Orleans. Um, and then the weekend of November 2nd, I will be in Middleton, Wisconsin, uh, for TeslaCon, which I'm so excited about. I've never done TeslaCon before. I've wanted to go for years. I tried for like two years to get in and I finally did. And then COVID hit. Mm. Um, but like it's on now, hopefully everything is good. Fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, so that'll be really exciting. And yeah, so, and then I've got one more event coming up, but I'm going to wait to tell you guys about that because um, there's some, some other extra things that kind of are going along with that. So we'll kind of do all of that together in just a couple of minutes. 
Uh, let's see. Um, I don't have information on my website right now about any events that I'm doing. I, I kind of want to wait just because, again, things are kind of up in the air. Um, before I go, like, plastering it across all of my platforms and stuff. But there will be more information coming um, on that on my website soon. Um, so, yeah, I think that's all the event stuff right now. Let's move on to tea. So you guys have seen this teacup before, my little keep calm and make tea. And um, right now I'm just drinking just an English breakfast. <clears throat> Apologies, you guys. Springtime, allergies. It's legit. Ugh. It's just, it's a struggle. So anyway, um, yeah, so springtime allergies. Hooray. Hooray. Uh, but yeah, so just a black English tea today. I need the caffeine. Like I said, I've been on the struggle bus today. <sighs> Your girl Dana is real bad about taking breaks. Um, but thankfully I've gotten better at recognizing signs of impending burnout, uh, which is really good. So I've had this problem, which I don't really want to get into for the last couple of days. And I tend to, I tend to hyper-focus and when I, I'm really frustrated with something because I really, really want to fix it. So I basically was hyper-focused on this problem all day yesterday. Uh, welcome, Gaz the Reader. Very nice to see you here. Thanks for joining. Um, but yeah, so tend to hyper-focus, hyper-focused on that all day yesterday. Supposed to be a day off, supposed to be resting yesterday. Did not do any of that. So today my brain was like, hey, um, I don't really feel like cooperating. Um, so this is basically one of the only like heavy work things I'm going to be doing. Um, although this is more like hanging out, so it's not really that hard. It's not, it's not really like work. Um, but anyway, so right. Talking about current news, talking about what I'm showing off. So like I said, I'm drinking some lovely black English breakfast tea. I'm curious if anybody else does this. I tend to sweeten my tea with honey. Um, because honey is delicious and I love it. Um, there's a character in the book Howl's Moving Castle. She's a witch and she puts honey into all of her spells and recipes. And I've never related to a character so hard. Um, so I'm wondering if anyone else likes honey in their tea. Just let me know in the comments if you feel like it. But yeah. Um, as for what I'm working on, uh, I am currently working on my second edit pass for the current work in progress. Um, which is going really well. The first edit pass was kind of rough. My main critique partner who I meet with every week, who there, there was a lot of comments on the first edit pass. So now that we're going through it again, um, and I've kind of prettied everything up and whatnot, and really kind of, kind of tried to shave away all of that not good stuff. Um, she's had far fewer comments, which feels really great. Um, unfortunately I had this whole idea that I was going to be able to like crack my own code like this edit pass I'm going to figure out what I'm doing to to like be successful to try and like streamline the process <laughs> and none of that has happened I just kind of sit down and I've just been like okay let's just try to make it better and most of the time I'm like this feels right but I don't know if it's working and then like I get to my critique meeting with my partner um every week and she's like it's going well. And I'm like, great. I have no idea like what it is that I'm doing. I guess this is why they call it instinct because you can't really like break it down into a process, but oh well. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm working on. Second edit pass. Very exciting. And after that, um, it'll go out to my other critique partners and we'll see what happens then. Um, by the way, total side, uh, sidetrack, but I am wearing, if you guys are familiar with my books, um, there is a there's a um, part in the very beginning where Lenore has to wear what is described as a pink and black be ribboned travesty. And as soon as I saw this corset one time at a con, I was like, I need that. It's the travesty. So yeah, so this is um, my little cosplay of that outfit. Anyway, side note. Uh, let's see, what else am I working on? So I've just got, I've got my notes down here because I am terrible at remembering things. So I got to have my notes. Uh, I haven't really been reading a whole lot lately, unfortunately. I've, I've got this battle between my podcasts and my, uh, my audiobooks and, and other reading and stuff. And 
I've got to unsubscribe to some podcasts or something because it's too much. It's getting to the point where it's starting to eat into my reading time. Uh, and that's not okay. So yeah, I gotta, haven't done a lot of reading. That's unfortunate. That or I need to start scheduling myself reading time because I thrive on a schedule, to be honest. So that might be the answer. Um, but yeah, so let's see what else. Okay. So here is, here's the big news, uh, as far as events go. Um, I am doing my very first virtual con ever starting on, well, it's actually only one day. So uh, that is going to be on May 8th. So coming up here in the next couple of weeks, and that is the Watch City Steampunk Festival, which again, I was so excited to go to the first for the first time. It usually takes place um, just outside of Boston in a place called Waltham, Massachusetts. Oh, it was gonna be glorious. It was outdoors and then COVID. So anyway, obviously um, they've had to uh, pivot a little bit, which has been great. And um, so they are doing their con online this year. Fingers crossed next year it'll be in person. Um, but yeah, so May 8th, there's gonna be a ton of stuff happening on their YouTube, on their Discord. They've, cr they've created a Discord especially for the festival. Um, and by the way, you can get more information on um, the Watch City Steampunk Festival at www. Sorry, www. Three Ws. Uh, WatchCityFestival.com, and they have a bunch of information on there. The website is fantastic. Um, they have this really cute promo trailer for the festival, where like we're all going to the moon, and they have like old timey radio voices that sound like this, and they're gonna tell you all about the festival and uh, the upcoming festivities there on that video. Sorry, I really, I have such a pension for like that old 40s radio voice. I, I just love it. Um, so yeah, let's see. So they've got that um, promo trailer on the website, which I really think you guys should go look at. Um, and since it is virtual, anybody in the world can go. Um, I'm really excited about it. I think it's gonna be awesome. And there's gonna be, I'm gonna be attending. And by attending, I mean like I'll be hanging out in the Discord all day. Um, to hang out with you, you lovely people and any of the attendees, me and a bunch of the other vendors are going to do the same thing. Um, so yeah, it's going to be super great. I'm really, really excited. And like I said, it's my first virtual con ever, so it'll be good. So one more time, that is the Watch City Festival. Sorry, um, the website is watchcityfestival.com. And when I put this up on YouTube, I will um, put a link in the show notes i'll also try to do it on instagram even though instagram kind of sucks about links to be honest they don't really allow them that much um but i will i'll include some stuff for that uh let's see what else did i want to mention about that oh yeah so <laughs> uh there'll be something else about that here in just a minute let me just make sure i haven't forgotten anything else uh let's see Oh, also that trailer has Muppets in case that's a, that's fun for you. I think that's super fun. Like I said, the trailer is just, it's a fun video. So I recommend watching it. Um, I did also have to create a promo video for that, um, for that event, which was really interesting because I'm not good at marketing or video production, but thankfully, uh, my husband who's amazing is good at both. So, um, he was able to actually like put together a really good video that like I'm pretty proud of. So with like music and everything. So that will also be featured on their YouTube channel for the uh, event. So that'll be really great. Uh, let's see what else, what else, what else, what else? Um, okay, so in conjunction with that, I have a different new announcement. And that is that I also have an Etsy shop now. So this is very exciting, uh, but also something I fought for a long time. I, in, on the most recent time that I was on the podcast, Productivity Alchemy with Kevin Sonny, he mentioned like, are you gonna open an Etsy shop because we can't do cons right now? And I was like, no, I don't want to. It's a whole other job, I don't wanna do it. And it is, it's, it's a whole other job. It's a lot of work. But I wanted a way for people to be able to buy all the things that I would usually be selling at a con for that virtual event. So I have set up an Etsy shop and you can find that, so let me make sure I give you the right thing. Um, that is etsy.com slash shop slash words by Dana. And I'll also have a link on my website to the shop to make that nice and easy. 
Man, there's so much news this time. Oh my gosh, this month. So many things have been happening. If you guys have noticed that I've been less than um, less than active on Instagram, this is why, because I have so many things, other things happening right now. Um, so yeah, and so in my promo video that I mentioned that I made for the Watch City Virtual Con, uh, there is a um, promo code for Watch City Festival attendees that will get you discounts at the Etsy shop. Um, FYI for the Etsy shop, um, I, I'm selling all kinds of different stuff in there. So I have crocheted dragon scale dice bags or reticules, if you prefer to call them that. I have uh, my handmade candles, which are all based on, I really should have brought props for this. Um, in the YouTube video, I'll like maybe do some editing or something and do a picture of it or something. I don't know. I'm not that good with video editing, so don't hold me to it. Anyway, um, so yeah, so dice bags, my handmade candles, which are based on my characters and they all smell lovely. Um, so I'm going to have, I'll have that. Um, what else do I have in there? I have to think, oh yeah, autographed copies of my books. That's where you can get those. Um, and I, I've got some new stuff coming out as well, uh, but it's just not ready yet. That was kind of the issue I was hyper-focusing on yesterday that I was trying to like fix and still have not figured out a solution for. Um, but hopefully I'll have, you know, by May 8th, I should have a bunch more stuff in there. Um, so yeah, so that's very exciting. Um, let me see, think what else is on here. So Etsy shop, uh, etsy.com slash shop slash words by Dana. Uh, let's see what else did I want to share in regards to that? Like I said, there's a coupon code in my watch city promo video, uh, that you can get a discount on the Etsy shop for it all goes together. Uh, right. So I did that. I talked about that. Um, so Attend Watch City, like I said, it's free, it's exciting, and you'll see, you can see lots of cool things there. Let's see what else. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so also I have a new newsletter coming out. I haven't put out a newsletter in a couple of months, mostly because there hasn't been a ton to talk about in there. Um, I don't like sending out newsletters unless I like actually have something sort of significant to share. Um, and just being like, hey, I'm still working on like the same project as before. It doesn't feel significant enough. But I have a new Broken Gear short story coming out in this month's newsletter. And um, you can you can sign up for my newsletter at my website, wordsbydana.com. So yeah, so you can do that there. And um, you can get access to all of the short stories. Those are available in my um, exclusive content page on my website. Like I said, VIP newsletter subscribers get that. Um, there's also one audio short story gift in there that's really fun. Um, and that was just, just a little freebie, little fun thing I like to put together. I am not an, I am not what you would call a professional audiobook creator, or at least if not creator, um, narrator, that's the word I'm looking for. I am not a professional narrator. Um, I do not have those skills. Like I said, it's just a fun thing that I like to do for um, for my VIP newsletter subscribers and more uh, also for my patrons on Patreon. Um, they have access to a bunch more of the audio versions of the short stories. Um, and also speaking of that, there will be a new audio short story going up on my Patreon at the end of this month as well. It's not the same short story that's going up on the newsletter, but that one will be coming soon, the audio version of that. In the newsletter this month, the little written short story, um, it is going, it is uh, kind of, it's very silly. <laughs> it's very silly and it's very fun. Um, and since it is tax month, well, would traditionally be tax month here in the US under normal circumstances, it is all about the pain of having to do taxes and business legitimately. Um, and if you've seen the very first episode of the show Black Books from the BBC, it is fairly inspired by that episode. So <laughs> like I said, it's very silly, um, but it's a lot of fun. So you can sign up for my newsletter for free at um, wordsbydana.com to get that short story. Um, and then if you are interested in audio short stories, those are available on my Patreon at the Cobalt and Limestone level. Um, and like I said, there'll be a different, or there'll be a new audio short story coming out this month for that, but it's going to be a different story 
So yeah, lots of lots of goodies all over the place. So many goodies. The newsletter has goodies. The Patreon has goodies. This has goodies. This video. So anyway, here we go. Uh, continuing on with the news. Like I said, y'all, I know it's it's already twenty minutes after, and I'm not even done with news because a lot of stuff has been happening. Um, let's see. I got that. I got that. Um, I talked about the Etsy shop. Um, oh. Also, uh, if you are a Patreon subscriber, you will also be getting a coupon this month to the new Etsy shop so that you too, because you are wonderful Patreon subscribers, uh, will get a discount. So that's very exciting. Um, so yeah, so there we go. That's a lot of the news. Um, I usually talk about novelty stuff just because novelty is how I try to keep things fresh right now during these pandemic times. Um, and usually I do that through food. So um, I'm going to go through this pretty quick, especially because um, I've only tried a few new things recently. Um, so last month I mentioned that I'd been watching uh, the show Nadia Bakes on Netflix. This is Nadia Hussein of uh, Great British Bake Off fame. I think she was from season six and I love her. She's fantastic. Um, and I she had like a savory meal on that show um it was like a baked noodle chicken thigh thing teriyaki flavors um it was delicious basically i love anything you can just like shove in the oven and go um so yeah it was super duper good i loved it um man the like the spices in there the ginger the garlic they're all very very strong um which i really love um i want spices to like punch me in the face so yeah um that was super good. I highly recommend it. I will, I included them in the show notes on YouTube last month and I will also include them this month as well. And then uh, I also recently, this is very exciting, I recently made my own homemade ramen, which ah, it was so, so, so good. I'm so proud. Um, there aren't really a lot of great ramen places here in town. I think we might have like maybe two or three. And honestly, um, a couple of them are either like all the way on the other side of town or they're downtown and I hate driving downtown. So I don't make it to them very often, but Dana loves ramen. So yeah, what I did with it, um, because uh, when you get like the ramen style, I forget what it's called, with pork, it's very salty, but very flavorful. So I actually used Spam for that, which was really, really nice. Um, I'm not usually like a Spam fan just because like that is a... That is a strong flavor. Um, but in the ramen, it was perfect. It was so good. Um, and then I put it with some uh, roasted Brussels sprouts. And with those being kind of earthy and bitter, it was a really, really nice contrast to like the fatty, salty flavor of the um, of the Spam. Uh, so yeah, that was super good. I actually just made some last night again because I liked it so much. Um, so yay, ramen. So tasty. Delicious. Um, I will also include a sort of vague recipe for that um, somewhere. I, I think I did. Uh, I think I do my own recipes when I make them myself in my Patreon Discord, and that's available to like one dollar subscribers and up. So I'll put that in there. Um, yeah. So I think that's that's all the news. <laughs> it's everything new that has happened since the last time we spoke last month. Oh my gosh, it's a lot. Um, so yeah. And let's see, what else? Um, so now we're gonna get to the questions. Like I said, y'all, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat or the little Q and A section, whatever it is that you wanna know, just let me know. It can be writing related, it could be book related, it could be food related, mood related, whatever. Whatever you guys wanna know, just toss it at me. Um, so, and then oh, as always, I did ask you guys for questions. Oh wait, actually, before we get to questions, really, really quick, um, I have a book recommendation for this month since I'm doing a uh, monthly book recommendation. So, ta-da, for April, I highly recommend Meet Your Baker. So, Meet Your Baker is written by Ellie Alexander, and it is just, oh my gosh, this book. It is adorable. It's a, it's a cozy mystery. Um, as you can probably tell, cause cozy mysteries really have like a certain style cover. Like, look, there's a, there's like the skull on the, um, on the baked goods case. That's very cozy mystery ish. Like you automatically know what kind of book this is when you see something like that. So anyway, it's cozy mystery. It's set in this little town in the Pacific Northwest and the like, 
it's all like Shakespeare themed. They do like a huge Shakespeare festival every year. It's just adorable. I absolutely love it. Uh, there's a ton of Shakespeare puns. Um, and the main character is a baker running a bakery. And golly, Pete, will this give you baked good cravings. I just love it. It's just, it's warm and fuzzy. It's everything I want in a cozy mystery. Um, and Meet Your Baker is the first one in the series. I don't know how many she has, but it's a lot. Um, and it's just delightful. I really love them. I'm a little bit picky about cozy mysteries, to be honest. Um, I have read some in some series that like, they didn't do it for me. So I know that like I can be a little discerning when it comes to these. So highly recommend. I just, I love it. It's, they're just delightful. Um, so Meet Your Baker by Ellie Alexander. April's book recommendation. Hooray. Also, it's really bright yellow. I love that yellow. So fun. Anyway, so right. That's all that. Um, talking about the questions. Like I said, if you guys have any questions, do leave them in the Q&A um, or just in the chat, whatever, whatever you guys prefer. So um, I have some questions for uh, from people previously. Um, so what are we going to start with? All right. Actually, this is really cute. It's very silly and very cute. Um, <laughs> I was talking to my dad on the phone the other day and he was mentioning this, this Instagram live thing. Psst. I forgot I had to do it the other day. And then I was like, what are you talking about, dad? And he was like, Dana, you're doing that Instagram thing. And I was like, oh yeah, oh my gosh, I do have that on Sunday. So anyway, <laughs> me being forgetful aside, this is why I live and die by my calendar um, and by schedules because I forget things. Um, so anyway, so my dad had mentioned like submitting questions for my Instagram live. And I was like, totally dad, do it, do the thing. Um, so he texted me, two questions which like is they're just adorable my dad is amazing okay so <laughs> question number one from my dad why is my daughter so brilliant and i'm not gonna lie you guys like when i saw that i made this stupid face ah. so yeah it just my dad is, is just really really sweet honestly my dad's like one of my biggest fans it's really sweet um and then his second question was, why is my daughter so beautiful? Which, and I will say that my friends, that is the correct order. Uh, if, and this is, this is actually kind of a bugbear with me. Not even kind of, it's definitely a bugbear with me. It really bugs me that like when dudes write about being attracted to women, the first thing they always mention is how physically attractive they are. Like in everything I've read written by a dude, that is the first thing. And I'm always like, Ugh. like maybe they'll talk about intelligence after, maybe they'll address personality, whatever, talents, but it's always the first thing. And every time I'm like, so anyway, um, <laughs> so like I said, friends, that is the correct order. Intelligence, aptitude, talents, whatever comes first. Then like physical appearance. So anyway, cause my dad is amazing and my dad understands. Um, so anyway, that was really sweet for my dad. It was really, really cute. Um, and my dad, my dad has always like been very, very much like, Hey guys, like you, cause he had, he had all daughters. He was like, you gotta learn stuff. You gotta be smart. You gotta like go out you gotta be able to like function in the world. So my dad always, always, always like focused on our skills and abilities and intelligence first and foremost and I'm going and I am forever thankful to him for that so anyway my dad being adorable aside um <laughs> so yeah uh that was really cute as for the other questions all right so I have um I have a bunch from uh SW Rain who always has wonderful questions and I'm so so grateful for her she is fantastic um she's also a steampunk author so sw rain r-a-i-n-e you can find her on instagram you should definitely follow her because she's wonderful um and maybe check out her books as well so um i let's see yeah i'm gonna go ahead and do hers first um so her first question is what is your favorite springtime activity and this might be kind of a lame answer because it's not just my favorite springtime activity, but like one of my, one of my favorite like outdoor activities is hiking. Um, this past year 
I, I fell really hard for hiking. Um, there's just like a mental levity to it that is so refreshing. Um, so basically with hiking, what I mean by that is that like, so you know how right now with the way everything is, like you go into a shop um, and you have to, you kind of like go through like that mental checklist of like, what have I touched? Like, don't go touching every single thing. Um, it's I use, I am a very touchy person. I am very tactile. And this past year has really, really like made me aware of how much I touch things. Um, so yeah, so like when I go on a hike, I don't have to do that mental checklist thing of like, what have I touched? And then like go through like, where have I been and like what I've done? Like there, I might've touched a tree, you know? Like that's kind of, all there is to it and it's just nice because I don't have to have the same like mental exercise that I go through when I go out like to a shop or something like that um because I don't I don't garden like plants die with me I don't know I, I try I try to keep them alive but it doesn't really work out I have really tried you guys like I don't know why plants die with me they just do so I'm not a gardener uh, yeah, and I know, like, a lot of people, like, they get, like, to get out and do yard work and stuff in the spring, or, like, spring clean. I hate cleaning. I hate it so much. Uh, and I don't like yard work. I don't like any of that, really. <laughs> so, yeah, hiking. Hiking is where it's at for me. Um, let's see. And like I said, I know that's a bit cheap because I like to hike year-round. Um, but it's especially nice in the spring when everything's opening up and whatnot and the, the weather is just gorgeous. I just went on a hike with um, one of my friends, my friend who I usually hike with um, a couple weeks ago. And it was it was really brisk. It was like probably 40 degrees that morning. And we had a discussion about how I just I, I think that that's perfect hiking weather because, you know, you kind of you kind of build up some some warmth about you and stuff. You sweat a little bit. But like when it's like 40 degrees. And it's just perfect because like you're still cool like it, like you're not like sweltering um yeah I just really love it it's so great uh all right so next question what is your favorite flower um so this is really interesting because it has changed over time um I I've long time been a really big fan of lilies uh I I think lilies are really interesting especially because they um like there's so many different shapes and types and stuff like if you look at like a lily of the valley they have those like kind of like little bell shapes about them and then of course there are easter lilies that have like the big white blooms calla lilies with this sort of like horn shape and whatnot um so i really like lilies i think they're gorgeous um i especially like tiger lilies and zebra lilies stuff like that because i like spots i don't know um they're just cute they look like they have freckles. Anyway, um, so for a long, long time, I've really, really loved lilies. But, um, oh, Gopher Johnco just joined us. Welcome, Gopher Johnco. Nice to see you. Um, so yeah, favorite flowers. Um, for a long time, it's been lilies. But actually, I've become a really big fan of poppies. They just, they look really pretty. I love the, like, that, like, poppy orange color. So yeah, um, favorite flowers. I'm trying to think if there's really anything else. I do enjoy a good sunflower because they're just very happy and bright. Um, that's actually my, I think my niece's favorite flower as well. So, and it always, they always make me think of her too. So yeah, so favorite flowers, hooray. Um, let's see. And as a reminder, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat or, um, or in the Q and A section, whatever. I'm not picky. So anything like that. Um, yeah, and I'll be happy to answer it. Whatever you want to ask, just let me know. All right, so next question that I got beforehand. This is also from SW Rain. Uh, let's see. What is your favorite scent? Okay, I feel like there's like five different answers for this. Because I, at least for me, scents are so evocative of like people or memories or anything like that. Like my mom used to always wear this one perfume, um, I don't speak French, so I'm gonna butcher this name, but um, I think it was called like Le Air du Temps or something like that. I don't know what it means, but she always wore that when I was really little. So now when I smell it, I think of her. Um, 
so yeah, so I really like it. It's a very like soft, like powdery kind of scent. It's not overwhelming. It's a very gentle smell. Um, I don't, honestly, I don't know if I have a favorite scent. Um, Cause like I said, they all just, they all just mean different things to me. Um, like for instance, when I make my handmade candles, um, and I'm, I'm kind of basing those scents on the individual characters. So Lenore, who's, um, that candle is lavender and vanilla scented. When I was formulating it, um, the vanilla scent that I have, the, the fragrance that I put in the candle, it's very strong. Like it feels like you stuck your face in just like a bucket of vanilla. And so, um, I feel like that was too much. Like Lenore is very like, I, the, those two scents work for me cause it's, it's kind of like a warm, sweet scent, but also like kind of the lavender is kind of crisp and sharp. Um, so I wanted a really nice balance between them. And so what I came out with when I developed that candle was something that's just the right amount of both things, like neither overpowers the other. And so like when I, when I smell that, I think of her, I think of like sort of her personality as that character and stuff. Rook, which was the most complicated one that I've developed so far. Um, you know, uh, the candle smells like uh, leather and whiskey. And so like leather has that kind of like, like warm tanniny smell. It's kind of earthy. Um, and then whiskey, this was really interesting because so my husband really loves whiskey. And so like I was like going through his various bottles and stuff and kind of like getting a whiff. And you know, not every whiskey is created equal. They all have very different qualities about them. But some of the, my favorite ones that I was smelling as I was like huffing <laughs> this line of whiskey that belongs to my husband, um, some of them have like that, like kind of caramelly smell about them. Um, and so what I ended up doing was I actually dropped uh, some caramelized praline scent into that mixture to kind of just give it a little hint of that. So yeah, I honestly, I don't think I have a favorite scent, but I love this question. Um, just because they're, gosh, they just evoke so many different feelings depending on what it is. Like if I'm, one thing is like, I don't like food scents. Um, if I'm buying a candle and it smells of like sugar cookies or pumpkin pancakes or whatever, I, I honestly don't really like those because then I want to eat the thing that it smells like and either I then end up making a batch of it and then having all of these cookies to eat, which I'll grant you is not the worst problem in the world, totally. Um, or then I'm just, I'm just grumpy because I don't have cookies, uh, which is totally a legit thing to be grumpy about. So yeah, I don't like food scents at all really, which is why none of my candles smell like food scents. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Like, I like really musky scents though. I think uh, Yankee Candle for years and years had one called, I think it was like Midsummer's Night. And this candle was so, so dark. It was like such a dark blue, it was basically black. And ooh, that smell, I could just roll around in that scent. I really love like musky scents. I love woodsy scents. Um, I have a, uh, I'm gonna pro probably mispronounce this. I think it's like uh, Cedar and Balsam. Is that how you pronounce that? Balsam? Anyway, uh, balsam um, candle that I really love. And ooh, I could roll around in that too. It's just, it's so woodsy and sharp and oh my gosh, I love it. So yeah, so really woodsy scents I would say are probably my favorite. Those really like musky. Um, and honestly, it smells like, it smells like a, like a attractive guy, like who just freshly showered. Those are the scents I like a lot. Um, so yeah, so we've, we've gone down a scents rabbit hole here but I love it. So anyway, um, just checking on our time. Okay. We're still good. Um, okay. Next question that I received ahead of time. Uh, let's see, what are your favorite and least favorite thing scenes to write? Oh man. Okay. So like, I don't pregame these questions. Um, I just sort of like copy and paste them from where they're submitted in my Instagram. <laughs> and then I just come in on, come in on them cold. So I'm going to just talk about that for a second while I think about this question, because that one's really hard. Um, but like I said, if you guys have any questions too, feel free to drop them in the chat or in the Q&A section, either one, totally good. Um, and we, I will be sure to answer those as well. Okay, so favorite scenes to write and least favorite. Okay, I'll talk about least favorite uh, the most, or at least first. Um, 
I don't, I'm not good with like, I'm not, okay, so fight scenes are really hard. Fight scenes are extremely hard to write. Um, I know I'm not the only writer who feels this way. Man, fight scenes are just, you gotta, you gotta be like quick. Like you can't like come in with like too much detail or anything. Cause that like just slows down the pace of it. Like a fight scene is very like, go, 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 go. But you can't go too fast either because you've got to make sure that like you keep your readers with you as far as like who's punching who and what's happening like in their bodies as far as pain. Um, you know, like what is the effect of um, like, let's say somebody gets slashed with the dagger or something like, I don't know, across the shoulder. Like then, okay, what is happening as far as like physical effect like is it is it just a cut like do we just get like graze a little bit and it's just bleeding a little bit or is it like gushing because it was really deep or whatever like did it did it cut through sinew and muscle um and so now that person is like having trouble with that arm because they like it it damaged their shoulder so much or whatever like so you have to you have to bring in those details as well so fight scenes are extremely difficult to write and i don't really like it I have to, and I have, but I don't like them. <laughs> so yeah, um, fight scenes, definitely. I really struggle with, um, with description. Oh, I feel like whenever, anytime I'm doing description, um, and I'm coming in at like the first and sometimes even second pass. Oh, it's, it's a mess. It is a hot, hot mess. I either am like over describing something or not describing it enough or like focusing on the wrong things about the description. Um, so this is, this is something I always struggle with and I, I know it's, I know it's just not my forte. So of course I don't really like it as much cause I just, I honestly just want to get to the things I do enjoy. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think what other types of scenes I don't really love writing as much. Let me think. Um, those are probably like the two biggest, to be honest, um, fight scenes and, and, uh, description type scenes just cause they're hard for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> but on the flip side of that, as far as favorite scenes to write, um, I, I love, I love character interaction scenes. I absolutely adore character interactions, but especially especially when like there's like clashing agendas. I love that stuff. Um, like for instance, I'm trying to think of some of my favorite scenes I've written. So there's a scene in Across the Ice. I really got to remember to like bring some props in here y'all so I can like show you this is the book or whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, so there's a scene in Across the Ice between just Rook and just Camilla. Um, I'm not gonna give too much away cause it's kind of an important plot point um, and no spoilers. But basically, um, oh, so basically it's a very high tension scene and both of them are like, Camilla wants something from Rook, like really badly. And Rook doesn't know about this situation that she is in. And it's a situation that affects him a lot. So there's a lot of tension between these two characters who, by the way, already don't really like each other. Like Camilla and Rook have never really gotten along. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of tension between them. Camilla is not a physical match for Rook, but she does uh, try to like physically stop him from like walking away. And man, like just the, just the, um, the desire both of these people have um, for a certain outcome in this scene is really good. So I really loved writing that scene so much. I loved revising it. I really enjoyed it, like just everything about it. Um, for those of you who are curious, this is a scene that takes place at night in the garden. Um, so yeah, so that is, that was super fun. Um, and I just, I love that. I love just like character interplay and whatnot. Um, I just, character, character interactions of basically any kind are super duper fun for me. Um, I'm trying to think of maybe some examples from the current book um, that were really, really fun. The current book I'm working on is so, is so silly that there's, there's a lot. I mean, basically there's this one character, Matt, who is like the AI assistant um, for my little alien character. 
and anything he does is fantastic oh you know what I'm, i can't i'm not gonna like spoil it or anything but there is a scene um where there's like a big reveal as to how a thing a pretty big thing um that happened earlier in the story happened um and that's that was a really fun scene to write because it was a huge reveal there's a lot of emotional tension like wrapped up in it um but at the same time uh characters are can't react the way they really want to in the situation because of the circumstances um so that was a lot of fun to write too um i just i just love clashing agendas so much i love making characters fight um and struggle against each other um it's just super fun i don't know why maybe i'm a psychopath anyway uh so that that's probably my favorite kind of scene to write uh let's see here what else we got Next question that I was given beforehand. What is the strangest item you own? That's a really good question. I don't know. A dead cactus? Sorry, that's just what I happen to be looking at over there. I told you, plants don't live around me. And I accidentally killed a cactus. And I just don't have the heart to get rid of it. Anyway, um, that's probably not the strangest thing I own. What is the strangest thing I own? Gosh, that's a good question. Um, I'm just like looking around. Like, is it up here with me? I don't know. Um, let me think. I wish I owned something haunted. That would probably be the strangest thing I own. Except I don't think I own anything haunted. Um, gosh, that's such a good question. I honestly have no idea. I don't know what, what, what do people consider strange? I don't know. Like, what I consider totally normal, people might consider strange. Um, strangest thing I own. Literally, that dead cactus might be it because I don't know. I don't know, like, what I own. That's that. That is that strange. I own a teacup that in the bottom it says you have been poisoned, which I really want to serve to someone someday. But I don't know if that counts as strange. Some people might think that's really disturbing and other people might think that's hilarious like me. So I don't know. I really wish I had an answer for that. Um, okay, we'll go with the dead cactus because that's all I know. That's all I, that's all I can think of as far as strange things I own. I wish I owned a skull, to be honest. There's, there's actually a uh, bone subscription box that you can sign up for that I've seriously thought about. And they send you cleaned skulls, which I think is really cool. I think skulls are really, really neat. Um, so if I owned a skull, that would be the strangest thing probably. But I don't. But I wish I did. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Okay, next question. What is your five-year goal? I'm just checking the time again. Okay, we're starting to wind down. If you guys have any last-minute questions, let me know, and I will, uh, like I said, I will go ahead and answer those. So what is your five-year goal? I honestly don't know. I'm really bad at planning. Um, I don't know how people do it. I once had a, uh, a conversation with a friend of mine who, he is, he is a very prolific uh, creator, he is both traditionally and indie published. He does a lot of role-playing games. Um, this is uh, Rick Grimes, my friend. Um, he does a ton of role-playing games. You, you should totally check him out. He writes for Geek and Sundry as well. Um, a lot of really good gaming, uh, DMing advice, things like that. And we were talking about this one day, and I was like, how do you do it? Like, how do you know what to do? Like, or like what you want to be doing in five years and basically his answer was like he looks at the projects he wants to have done um that he wants to have completed so you know i've kind of i've kind of thought about that a lot and so five-year goal probably would be i want i want three more broken gears books out within the next five years that's a um that's kind of a I don't know if that is a, um, if I'm trying to like just play it safe by saying three, because I do have a history of putting out one book a year so far, except for last year because reasons. Um, but yeah, so I would say probably I want to put out three more Broken Gears books in the next five years. I hope to have a traditionally published book uh, somewhere within the next five years, the book I'm working on right now. Um, hopefully that is a traditionally published book by that point maybe hopefully we'll see we'll see if anybody picks it up and if anybody likes it um so yeah so that's probably my five-year goal um 
I don't know how people do it. Like, I'm sure businessy people have, like, I don't know, mileposts or milestones or whatever that they want to have hit. Honestly, I'm not good at business planning. <laughs> I need I need people to do this for me um, or to help me with it. Because really, I just want to write books and put them out. Like, that's what I want to do. I want to write books and I want to put them out. Um, like, I have a plan for within probably by this time next year, I'll have one of those Broken Gears books out. That will be the squishy romance that I have talked about before. Um, I don't know what's going to come after that because the other books that I kind of have percolating, one of them is really sad. It basically begins and ends with death. Um, so I'm not sure when I'm going to be ready to write that just because my emotional bandwidth has severely decreased over the last year. Um, but uh, that's in there. That's percolating. Um, I eventually want to write a story for uh, Mint and Ginger, the two apothecary twins who are in the Broken Gears world. So we'll see. We'll see which ones they end up being. Um, I'm sure I'll figure it out. So yeah, so that is sort of a general five-year goal. Um, time will tell if I get if that happens. Um, a lot can happen in five years. A lot can happen in one year, as we all know. Um, so we will see. Um, right, so five years. I think that's that's basically all I have. Um, I'd like to go also somewhere within the next five years. I did have a goal to go back to BookCon, except BookCon has kind of disbanded now. I went a couple years ago and it was fantastic. Oh my gosh, that event was wonderful. I loved it so much. Um, but they've, it's they, they haven't said we're never doing BookCon again. The group that runs it has said we need to like figure out a new way to do BookCon and I don't know if that is a monetary decision or if that's a decision based on not being sure what the future holds and COVID and all that. I don't know. But um, so whatever form BookCon maybe takes in the future, I would like to go back to there because it was fantastic. I'd also like to see the city of New York instead of just the inside of the conference center like I've done twice now. So, but we'll see. That would be really cool. Um... I don't know, maybe also, uh, let's see, there is a, a big um, steampunk con, I think it's called the Gas Lamp something or other in San Francisco, so I'd love to attend that, but that's a biggie. Right now I only attend cons that I can drive to, so we'll see what happens. All right, uh, next question, because we only have a couple of minutes left. Um, this actually comes from... Erica Books Always, who is also another wonderful person on Instagram. Um, uh, oh, and welcome, uh, Krista. Welcome, Wiccan Goblin King. So glad y'all could join us. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any last minute questions, um, since we are close to wrapping up, um, go ahead and put them in the uh, in the chat, and I will be sure to answer them um, in the chat, in the question and answer section, wherever you like. Either way is fine. So uh, this next question comes from Erica Books Always, and she asked to outline or not to outline. That is a very good question. Um, I I am not an anti outliner, but I am very I'm very much like a strong pantser. Um, welcome, City Council fourteen. Glad to see you here as well. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat since we are close to wrapping up, and I'll make sure to answer those. Um, anyway, so Erica books always to outline or not to outline. I have outlined before, um, into the fire had an outline, which kind of got thrown out the window, um, <laughs> uh, halfway through writing that book because I realized that what I had planned absolutely did not work for like the characters. It didn't work for the story. It just took it off in this like weird direction. It did not need to go. So all of that got trashed. Um, so I think for me, I don't usually outline. I usually do what's called like discovery writing where I basically figure out what's happening as I write. Um, honestly, that's just the way that works for me most of the time. I had that same um, situation with the short story that's gonna be coming out in this month's newsletter. I spent like two hours trying to outline and figure out like what happens next in it and got nowhere and then once I like just sat down and said fine I'll just like start writing some stuff I figured it out and it was all there so that's just sort of my process I just tend to think of stuff as I'm writing it out um but I did also I did have an outline though kind of 
for Across the Ice because with Across the Ice being the third in a trilogy and having all of these like little threads that needed to get like tied up and come back together and stuff. Um, I had an Excel spreadsheet that kind of served as my outline. So basically we're like, I had the characters and then like, or maybe it was like characters and then like the, the chapters and like who was in what chapters and like what was sort of happening in each scene and whatnot. So I could make sure that like everything was coming together the way it needed to. Um, and then also so that um, I didn't forget anyone. Like as I was building this outline, I realized Kieran didn't show up for like the first eight chapters in that book. And I'm like, bruh, what are you doing? You need to be back in here. So like I had to switch some stuff around and do that so that he wasn't just like, oh, by the way, I've been here this whole time. I just haven't come in for like eight chapters. Um, so yeah, so I tend not to outline, um, but there have definitely been times where I've needed to do some kind of like pre-planning just to kind of hold everything together nice and neatly. Um, I don't, I can't, I don't know what Across the Ice would have looked like if I hadn't, um, if I hadn't had that, to be honest. Um, <laughs> cause there are just, there were a lot of pieces that had to kind of work together. Um, so generally no, but also I am, I'm a huge, 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 huge proponent of writing the way that works for you. I don't think people need to discovery, right? I also don't think people need to outline. Um, I feel very strongly that you need to figure out what works best for you. So a good writing friend of mine, Serena Langer, she's, um, got, she does dark fantasy generally, another person you should follow on Instagram because she's lovely. She and I had this conversation recently and she has to outline, like she did a novella recently where she just sort of pants to the whole thing. For those who don't know, pantsing is, is kind of like what we call writing by the seat of your pants, where again, you're just discovery writing. Um, so she did that and she found she did not like it at all. Um, she really, really doesn't like writing without an outline. So, you know, and that's what works for her. And that's great. Um, I, like I said, I'm a big proponent of people writing in whatever way works for them. Um, and I, I don't agree with people who say that you have to do it this way in order to be successful, which a well-known writer who will remain nameless has publicly condescended to me about, like we were on a panel together and this person was like, patted me on the shoulder and was like, oh, well, most professional writers tend to outline. And it was, uh, a, it was a rage making moment. Um, so I will not be doing that to anyone ever because that's not okay. So yeah, um, so that is my view on outlining and whatnot. And I think it can be really great, but also I don't think you have to do it. I certainly don't. Um, and I think, yep, that is about time for us. Y'all, thank you so much for joining me today. I have really enjoyed this as always. Um, and I now have a permanent schedule for these Instagram lives. Uh, they are basically the fourth Sunday of every month at 3 p.m. Central Time. So feel free to join me again next month. I'll put up announcements about it and whatnot. Thank you so much for joining today, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.